Welcome to Objective 7 in Unit 1 in Accounting 3310. In this unit, we're going to finalize the accounting information system cycle by looking at financial statements. Our objective here is to see how financial statements are created from the information in a trial balance. Here's an income statement. Notice how distinctive it is from the kinds of trial balances that we looked at previously. Before, ever since we were talking about journal entries, we've been emphasizing the debit and credit conventions and how that clarity helps us. It helps us to analyze transactions and record them accurately in journal entries. It helps us put them into ledgers in the same order of our analysis. It helps us summarize information into the trial balance and check for errors, but here suddenly they're gone. Financial statements are for external users who are going to be reading this information. And to them, the debits and credits are irrelevant. The debits and credits are used in order to get us to this point. So someone reading through an income statement has no need to know the underlying ways in which an accounting information system works. Sometimes after having been through all of that, you may feel like, ah, this is all mixed up. The sales number shouldn't be in the same column with cost of goods sold, since sales on our books is a credit balance and cost of goods sold on our books is a debit balance. That's not the point for financial statements. Most commonly, financial statements are in a single column, and people use the information from the account title uh, to indicate whether it's being added in or subtracted out in order to come up with the final summary figure on that particular financial statement. So here, the sales figure of 79000 that's something that increases net income. We know that because we know what sales are. The next three items, cost of goods sold, salary expense, and depreciation expense, all decrease net income, and we understand that because we know what those expenses are. So on our income statement, we have uh, one revenue and three expenses. We're subtracting the expenses from the revenues to get net income of 5500 The income statement is the first statement prepared. It's dated for the time period covered in the statement. So notice, let me go back, uh, for the year ending 12-31-2001. So here it's not for one individual day. Y you can have daily income statements. They're just not very helpful uh, for external users to know what your income was on a daily basis. So we've got the entire period of time indicated here. It includes all of our revenue and expense accounts, usually in a single column format. On our if we're going to create an income statement from this trial balance, uh, we'll, we will take the information from the trial balance column and move just those accounts that pertain to the income statement over to the next column. When we do so, the revenue, depreciation expense, cost of goods sold, and salary expense columns are moved over. Uh, if they were on the left in the trial balance, they're on the left in the income statement columns. When we move those over, notice that uh, they don't, we don't have debits equal credits for those four accounts. Uh, if we did, that would mean we had exactly the same amount of expenses as we have revenues or we would break even, which is a very unfortunate position for a company to be in. Instead, uh, we need an additional 5500 in the debit column to balance with the credit column. That 5500 is written on the row with the title net income. It is not written there for the income statement uh, for the uh, totally uh, to identify net income because we know here if expenses are less than revenues, that means we have positive net 
income. Uh, so notice here that that net income is a debit in the debit column on the income statement columns so that when we add down we do get debits equal to credits but we move that net income information now over into the retained earnings columns uh, in a self-balancing way so in that row we have 5500 in the debit column and under retained earnings it's in the credit column net income there is a in the retained earnings columns is a credit because it's positive retained earnings that's going to be increasing retained earnings. Remember back to our debit and credit conventions. A credit is a decrease in an asset, increase in a liability, increase in owner's equity. It will increase retained earnings. So we've identified and we've moved over into those income statement columns the information that we need to put on the income statement and we have found what net income is it's the missing piece that we need in order to make debits equal to credits so we can create the income statement from that those worksheet columns the next statement we're going to look at is shareholders equity we're going to emphasize here not just the changes in the retained earnings statement, but we have the possibility of changes in all of the other shareholders' equity accounts. To keep it simple right now, we're going to have a shareholders' equity that just has common stock and retained earnings in it. So we're going to list the beginning balance in each account in shareholders' equity, the source of changes in that account during the period, and then find an ending balance. When you look at this for a real company, there are likely to be more columns because a more complicated company may have more than just common stock. They may have preferred stock. They may have other securities also that generate additional columns. And as we're going to find out later on, uh, there is also accumulated other comprehensive income, but that's for the future. Right here at our simplest form, Retained earnings here is changing by increasing by income, decreasing by dividends to get a new ending balance of $9,900 from its beginning balance of $5,000. There were no changes in common stock during the period. The statement of shareholders' equity is dated for the time period covered in the statement the same as income. It always includes net income and dividends declared and it'll include anything else that changes common stock or retained earnings. Here it is now uh, in the income statement in the worksheet format. We're going to move over into the retained earnings column all of the accounts that affect retained earnings. So that's retained earnings and dividends declared and the net income figure that we just figured out from the income statement columns. When we, add up, when we add up the debits and the credits in the retained earnings columns, we had the beginning balance of retained earnings of 5000 plus net income gave us 10500 and we just had dividends declared in the debit column of 600 So those didn't balance until we added in the 9900 for retained earnings. That number makes debits and credits balance in these two columns and it is the ending balance of retained earnings. That's how helpful this worksheet is. We can use the debit and credit conventions here to find the balances that we need for the financial statements. That 9,900 ending balance in retained earnings now is moved over into the balance sheet column because it's the ending balance of retained earnings that shows up on the balance sheet, not the beginning balance of 5,000. Uh, the balance sheet is as of the end of the year and needs to have the ending balance. Here's the balance sheet format for this company. Uh, it, we have either a two-column approach or a single-column approach. Because my slide has more width than height, I've used the two-column approach here. Uh, 
the balance sheet is for a single day rather than a period of time. It is exactly how much these accounts have in balance at the end of the day on December 31st. We list all of the asset accounts, all of the liability accounts, and all of the shareholders' equity accounts and demonstrate here that total assets are indeed equal to total liabilities plus stockholders' equity. Notice here the retained earnings balance is the one we computed on the worksheet, the 9,900. That retained earnings balance is the beginning balance of retained earnings plus net income less dividends. We can see in this balance sheet that it's organized by the fundamental accounting equation. So the place that we started uh, our unit one uh, is now the place where we're ending to see that fundamental accounting equation on the balance sheet. The last two columns on our worksheet are the balance sheet column and we've moved over all of the accounts that are on the balance sheet into that column. Now notice as we look at this total worksheet now, uh, every account on the trial balance has been moved into either income statement, retained earnings, or balance sheet. So although we worked on it on a statement by statement basis, a common way of doing this preparation is to work our way down through all of the accounts and put the information on the statement that they belong on, starting from the top to the bottom. And so our first accounts from cash down through common stock are all balance sheet accounts. The next accounts, retained earnings and dividends declared, first appear on the retained earnings statement. We calculate a new balance of retained earnings and notice it's the new retained earnings balance that shows up on the balance sheet. When we add down the balance sheet columns, now the debits and the credits, we get an accurate total for debits equal to credits. Notice though that that 25,400 doesn't match any figure on financial statements. It is just a check figure on the worksheet to show that debits are equal to credits and we have completely analyzed all of our information on this worksheet. It doesn't match total assets or total equity or, or anything else because uh, we have a potential here that we could have other figures uh, such that assets could have been greater than uh, other figures. So that 25,400 is a check figure on the balance sheet for us primarily. Uh, This next sheet gives us a summary in narrative terms for the worksheet that we have just looked at, that we've just discussed. There are two more statements that are outside of that worksheet that uh, we need to talk a little bit about. We're going to extensively talk about the statement of cash flows in Unit 7, but in the meantime, it is a summary of a single account of cash and organizes its information it to uh, provide us with summary information about the operations of the company, the investing activities of the company, which is uh, the use of fixed assets and of securities in the company, and the financing activities, which is interactions with investors and with lenders. It's prepared by looking at that single cash account or it can be prepared from looking at all of the non-cash accounts. Again, we're not going to prepare it until we're at Unit 7, but we will look at it so that we can use it throughout this course. Uh, it is another flow statement, that is it shows how cash changes during a period of time and so the dating of a statement of cash flows is like the income statement and the statement of shareholders' equity. It lists the cash flows from operations for uh, the company 
uh, investing activities, and financing activities. We can identify these from the company that we have just looked at uh, because we know that that 600 represents the dividends paid. Uh, so we can see that as part of the financing activities. And we can see the borrowing that took place, uh, or rather in the investing activities, we can see the equipment that was purchased that is a cash outflow. The change in cash here uh, is a reconciliation for us between beginning cash and ending cash to demonstrate that this in fact matches up with the balance sheet. So our ending cash on the statement of cash flows has to match what's on the balance sheet. The final statement that's required is the statement of comprehensive income. There are some non-owner changes in wealth that don't appear on the income statement. Those items have been uh, particularly identified in generally accepted accounting principles uh, because they represent items that are apart from the general operations of the business. They're called other comprehensive income and they're outside of the transactions that we study in this class uh, but they are studied in intermediate accounting or in advanced accounting. We're going to take a look at what some of these look like. This statement of comprehensive income either appears uh, connected to the income statement as a lower portion of it or it appears immediately after the income statement and it begins with net income and then it lists all of these other deferred uh, uh, wealth changes that are specialized changes. Uh, two examples here that are very common for companies are unrealized gains on investments. Uh, companies often put their excess cash into securities and this is a place that changes in uh, the value of those investments would appear. Another very common change that doesn't appear on an income statement is when a company is a multinational company and keeps uh, 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 operations in foreign countries when we need to present uh, information on a single set of financial statements uh, we then have to translate the information from pesos or euros or or whatever the books are in that for those foreign enterprises back into dollars and those changes in exchange rates needed in order to translate foreign currency into US dollars uh, changes on an ongoing basis. So the change in wealth due solely to exchange rate changes appears here on this statement of comprehensive income. Both of these items are items that are expected to fluctuate through time but don't have any particular impact on the performance of the company in any given year. Comprehensive income though uh, provides us with a final summary figure of all non-owner changes in wealth of a company uh, for the year as a whole. We have now seen all of the financial statements that are developed for a company and uh, we are going to study these more extensively in Unit 7, but we need to have a basic understanding of them at this time uh, so that we can see the outcome of our financials, of all of the transactions that we've recorded. Thank you.